Your doctor has your recent reports. You have cancer. But hold on, hold on, hold on. They can treat it. Let's imagine a future where cancer diagnosis won't seem like a terrible and terrifying event, but news of a manageable and eminently treatable condition like diabetes or heart disease. Well, that's not the case, at least not yet. Today, cancer diagnosis means a very uncertain future. Majority of cancer patients will end up getting the same one-size-fits-all treatment consisting of surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Each part of the treatment is considered crucial, is expensive, and might not be effective. This is about to change. The question is how quickly. I am a biomedical engineer and an associate professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where the work my team and I are doing right now, using artificial intelligence or AI, has the power to change the course of cancer treatments. And get this, create a future where an AI oncologist or an AI cancer doctor will serve as an ally to a human doctor in creating personalized, precise treatment decisions for cancer patients. That sounds like science fiction, right? And maybe a little scary. Your AI oncologist might be ready to see you, but are we ready for an AI oncologist? Faced with a life and death decision, we might be hesitant trusting AI. And I get it. There's a great deal of talk about AI these days, and the result is misinformation or misunderstanding. Either people think AI is magic and can change the course of humanity, or that it's this evil, mysterious entity that will one day destroy us all. The truth? is that it's neither. It's just a technology, perhaps one of the greatest innovations in recent times that just contributed to two Nobel Awards in 2024. But for us to use it and trust it, we need to understand what it can and cannot do. Let me take a step back for a moment. For us to truly grasp the power of AI and cancer care, we first need to understand the limitations of our present situation. So let's imagine a patient who we are going to call Mr. Kumar. And no, this is not his real name. And although this is not his real name, I want to make this person as real as possible. So Mr. Kumar is known for two things. He is known for his love for teaching. He's a high school teacher. He teaches chemistry and math and his students love him. He's a wonderful teacher. And he's known for his love for soccer. He coaches both his kids' soccer teams, and you'll often find him playing soccer in his backyard with his two kids. So as you can imagine, he's leading a perfectly happy, normal life like most of us, up until the day that he's diagnosed with a glioblastoma. Glioblastoma the most aggressive brain tumor there is. This is shocking news, and it gets worse. His oncologist tells him he has an average of 15 to 20 months left to live. He's prescribed the standard treatment, which is tough and aggressive, but he somehow gets through it, and it seems to be working. Until it isn't. Just at the moment when Mr. Kumar has allowed himself to believe that maybe, maybe his treatment is working and maybe he's getting better, he's told that on one of his MRI scans, there is a lesion that looks like it could be cancer. But his oncologist admits they can't be sure there's a 40% chance that the lesion could just be benign, just a simple side effect of the treatment that he's getting. <sighs> Now, at this moment, Mr. Kumar has a tough decision to make. He can either roll the dice and bet on the possibility that the lesion is nothing. But who would do that? I wouldn't. Or he could undergo an extensive, invasive procedure where a neurosurgeon would cut open his skull and take the lesion out. A very difficult procedure with a long recovery period, and one that might be completely 
unnecessary. This is the central challenge of oncology, the unpredictability of the disease and the uncertainty around how to treat it. We think of cancer like a fist, like a solid mass that's sitting somewhere inside of us that we need to take out. If that were the case, treating it would be relatively simple, right? But cancer isn't this, it's more like this. Actually, it's more like this and a little bit of this. <laughs> cancer is chaotic, it's messy. It's not just hard to predict, it's hard to see the whole of the tumor and predict how it's going to evolve over time. And so, there is always a risk of overtreatment and undertreatment, and add to that the fact that over 40% of all cancer patients will go bankrupt within the first two years of their treatments. The bottom line is, we need to stop relying on these inconclusive and in invasive procedures about our cancers and start using objective and quantitative measurements using AI to learn as much information as we can about our tumors and use that information to predict how a tumor will respond to the treatment. You know, the fact of the matter is there is no one in this room, no one in this world who will not be touched by cancer. Get this. One in two men and one in three women will develop cancer in their lifetimes. And for those who do, the financial side effects can be just as devastating as the physical ones. But you know, it's not just the cost of the treatment that's the problem. It's the uncertainty. Cancer patients are asked to make life-altering decisions based on best guesses and probabilities. Questions like, should I undergo that expensive invasive procedure with a 40% chance that my lesion could be benign? Or should I spend my family's life savings on a treatment that may or may not work? These are impossible choices, and no one should have to make them. This is the hope of AI in cancer care. Imagine instead of these exploratory surgeries and invasive biopsies, we trained an AI model using thousands of already collected MRI scans to learn subtle, unique characteristics about the tumor and use that information to predict how a tumor will respond to the treatment. Let's call this technology MRAI, MR Augmented Intelligence. These MRAI models have shown unprecedented accuracies in distinguishing between benign and malignant tumors, as well as predicting patient-specific responses to treatments, allowing the doctors to create personalized therapy decisions, therapy plans for every cancer patient, giving them the best possible chance of survival. And this isn't just theoretical. This is the work we are doing right now. Our research team has developed these MRAI models that have demonstrated over 90% accuracy, which is comparable to, and in some cases, surpassing the accuracies of invasive biopsies in diagnosing brain tumors. We are also developing MRAI models that can reliably predict patient outcomes and responses to treatments like chemotherapy and experimental drugs. These tools don't help the, the, just the doctors, but they will also benefit the patients in making the best decisions for themselves. I have been working with AI, exploring its applications in medicine for years. But this journey began for me years ago when I was completing my doctorate. I was already working with AI on a different kind of cancer when a neurosurgeon opened my eyes to the dire challenges faced by brain tumor patients. Every kind of cancer is important, he told me. But brain tumor is the worst, one of the most aggressive, challenging, and complicated tumors to treat. And it's not just about diagnosing the disease, but understanding its complexity so we can figure out how to treat these tumors. If AI can help us do that, he said, then that's what this new technology should be doing first. That conversation changed my life and bringing AI to the forefront of cancer patients, especially the ones dealing with aggressive conditions, became my life's work. Over the years, the personal stakes of our research have become evident to me through cancer patients who often reach out to me. 
They want to know if there is a way to know for sure that the invasive, toxic treatment that they are prescribed, is it going to work? Will it save their life? That's where we started, right? With Mr. Kumar trying to figure out what steps he needs to take. Whether or not to undergo that expensive, invasive procedure with significant and complicated side effects of its own to save his life. A pivotal moment arrives in Mr. Kumar's journey when the MRI analysis comes up with a reassuring conclusion. The lesion in Mr. Kumar's brain, thankfully, is not a tumor, but just a benign lesion. And the MRI analysis comes up with that conclusion with a high degree of confidence, thanks to its advanced learning from countless similar cases. Relieved, Mr. Kumar avoids that unnecessary surgery and instead of a grueling recovery, goes back home to his family. I want to end my talk by inviting all of you to contribute and participate in making the AI oncologist in my story a near-term reality. Yes, we need more investments in AI research and in cancer research, but we also need access to data to make these models even more reproducible, even more accurate, to take the accuracy from 90% to 99%. If you've ever been touched by cancer, if you've had any imaging scans, any medical tests, then you have the power to contribute directly to this research. Donate your medical records, your imaging scans, your medical tests to help researchers create these tools that can change the course of cancer care. Imagine leaving behind our digital legacy for the next generation where these AI models, trained on millions and millions of data points, will help doctors create personalized therapy plans for every cancer patient, be it brain tumor, cervical, prostate, lung, or breast. Together, we all have the power to contribute to ensuring that no cancer patient has to deal with the disease without the knowledge, help, and support they need. No one has to wonder if their family will be able to financially survive while they deal with this disease. That future is within our reach. With AI and with your help, we can make this future a reality where no one has to be terrified of the words, you have cancer. Thank you.